A sharp wire quickly cut through the entire deck when no one was paying attention. The steel wire cut off 600 passengers, including the captain, from the middle in just a moment. Only a 10-year-old girl survived because of her short height. After that, the huge ship magically disappeared. Forty years later, a fleet of search and rescue ships just happened to be passing by. They had just salvaged a shipwreck, they sold the ship's antiques and made a lot of money. Everyone had a party to celebrate. That's when Airman found Murphy with a bunch of photos. He was on patrol in his plane when he found a cruise ship drifting at sea. According to the law, whoever can tow the unmanned cruise ship back can become the new owner of the unmanned cruise ship. So the two men agreed to set out immediately. That night they drove their boat to the sea where the cruise ship was located. As soon as they got close to the ship, they let out a cheer. The cruise ship was Antonia Raza, the super cruise ship that disappeared in 1962. Their tugboat was a small toy in front of it. There was no way they could tow Antonia Raza away. So Murphy decided to take his men up to check out the situation. The ship was rusty. The stern was already deformed. There was no lifeboat. The lifeboat was also empty, it seems that all the passengers on board had escaped. But the inside of the ship is quite strange. Murphy and the others went inside, and the communication signal was inexplicably lost. The pendulum clock in the lobby can still tell the time after 40 years. A toy on the table can automatically say welcome, but all they could see was wealth. No one noticed this detail. Everyone was walking cautiously forward. Suddenly the man in front of them stepped off and fell. The moment of crisis. Epps grabbed him in time, just as she was about to make her move. She saw Katie, a girl in white, appearing downstairs. She was staring at them with big eyes, but when Epps took a closer look, Katie disappeared again as a shadow. Epps felt a little scared, but Airman reassured her that she must have been mistaken. Epps could only follow the group with doubts and continue to walk forward. Soon they reached the captain's bedroom. Here, they found an electronic watch that was still running. Murphy and other people's faces instantly showed a look of horror, because in 1962, electronic watches were not introduced at all. Then there was only one possibility, is that someone had been here before? But what Murphy couldn't figure out was, why didn't these people tow the cruise ship to the pier to sell it for money? Fearing that the cruise ship might be dangerous, Murphy immediately took everyone back to his tugboat and held a democratic discussion. Murphy was the first to speak, he said the cruise ship looked very strange. It was like a legendary ghost ship. Let's just go home. But the rest of the ship's crew was already overwhelmed by the huge profits. Since they were here to salvage and make money. So they had to search the ship for antiques and treasures even if they couldn't tow the ship away. Murphy agreed with them. So they devised a plan to split up the search. The woman found a pool full of bullet holes on an abandoned cruise ship. Could there have been a fierce battle here? Epps is about to climb up and tell the others the news. Suddenly Katie, the girl in white, reappears. Epps was so scared that he fell unconscious. When she woke up, Airman was around to comfort Epps again. How did you get dizzy again? Epps did not say anything but she felt that she had seen the right person this time. Just as they were leaving, the pool suddenly vomited red blood like crazy. Meanwhile, not only Epps sighed, the rest of the team also experienced something weird. Greer found a freshly lit cigarette with a woman's lipstick in the living room. But the confused Greer doesn't notice the red dress in the corner. Murphy found a freshly opened bottle of red wine. He wanted to smell the freshness of the wine. Instead, he saw the former captain of the cruise ship in the mirror. All kinds of weird phenomena immediately let everyone think that this ship is a ghost ship. Just when everyone was ready to give up, Epps found several boxes of gold on the ship. The glitter of gold instantly dispelled everyone's panic. However, everyone decided to take the gold and leave this terrible place. They must not do the kind of thing where they have to take the money but not spend it. But just as they were carrying the gold, the tugboat exploded due to a gas tank leak. The coxswain who remained on board was blown up along with the boat. Their escape boat was shattered. The gold was worth millions, but not for food. Everyone was soon in a state of embarrassment and confusion. They wanted to call for help, but they were afraid they would take the gold. Greer was depressed when he heard that. He had to drink to drown his sorrows. He was in the middle of his drink. Suddenly everything around him went back 40 years. A group of men dressed in black applauded him. A woman in a red dress comes up to him and tries to make out with him. The lustful Greer is slowly lured into a trap. He accidentally falls from a height and loses his breath. 
Under and Jamie unearth half a box of canned goods, although the cans have been sealed for 40 years. But it tasted fresh. While they were enjoying their meal, the delicious cans in their hands suddenly turned into disgusting maggots. And Murphy, who was drinking alone, had a strange encounter. Drunk, he saw the dead captain of the cruise ship. The captain first gave him a friendly toast, and then told him the secret of the year, and gave him a few pictures. But after Murphy saw the last photo, he was instantly unsettled. He rushed to find Epson Witty to tell her the truth. But halfway there, he encountered the spirit of his dead teammate. Murphy was scared out of his mind. When he saw Epps, he also thought she was a ghost. The two get into a fight. In the nick of time, Aramin knocked Murphy out from behind and put him in a steel box. The rest of the team was no longer demoralized. They rushed to repair the cruise ship and try to get out of this hellhole. And Epps wants to find the truth. She thinks Kay, the girl in white she saw earlier, must be able to help her. After a lot of hard searching, Epps finally found Katie's body and other spirits. Epps tries to ask Katie what happened to the ship, but Katie seems to have something to hide, and said that Epps was very much like her mother. Epps was devastated after hearing that. Let's not even talk about whether they knew each other or not. When the girl danced on the ship in 1962, Epps hadn't even been born yet. How could Epps be her mother? But in order to find the truth, Epps did not reveal it on the spot. The girl was about to tell Epps, someone was collecting souls, but then the blood suddenly crawled all over the wall. The girl was so scared that she was incoherent. She just kept telling Epps to get out of here, and then disappeared. The woman returned the pendant to the girl in white, only to find that the pendant could pass through Katie's hand. That's when Epps realizes, Katie was a ghost without a body. The rope from the 1960 to hanging took Katie's life. Katie used her mind to show Epps what happened in 1962. When the ship was attacked, the cooks were all assassinated. Then the fake chef poisoned the food, and most of the passengers died of poisoning. Hundreds of people were cut off by wires in the ballroom. The sailors and passengers who survived were also driven away by the group. They were all gathered in the pool and lost their breath. The gunmen who killed the crew took care of everyone. After the gunmen killed everyone, they broke into the cargo hold and took out the gold they had hidden there. They were all overjoyed, but their boss is under the spell of the red dress. He wanted to make out with her and have the gold doll to himself. So he killed all of his friends. But it didn't last long. The red-skirted girl backhanded the boss and blew his head off. That's when the real backstage manipulator came on the scene. It turns out that the red-skirted girl was ordered by him. Then the backstage manipulator quickly finished off the red dress girl and made an iron hook mark on her hand. Epps also saw his face at this time. The killer was no other than, it was Airman, the man who had tipped them off in the first place. Oh my god. Epps then realized, Airman attracted them to this ship. His real purpose was to kill them all and collect their souls. Epps rushed back to check on Murphy, who was locked in a steel box. Unfortunately, it was too late. The picture in the drowned Murphy's hand was of Airman. Epps tried to tell the rest of the team the news. Instead, she found out, Under was strangled by the gears of a suddenly activated mechanism when he was lured underwater to repair something. Epps chased after Jamie and finally found him. She wanted to tell him the truth, but before he could finish, Airman rushed over. Epps can only hand Jamie a gun and told him to keep an eye on Airman, but Airman can control people's minds. He provoked Jamie into shooting him, but the demon Airman had an immoral soul. He possessed the body of Jamie, who had just killed him, and Epps was planting a bomb and planning to blow up the ship. But then Airman, who was transformed into Jamie, found her. He said we stole the gold and then live a life of wonder isn't it good. But Epps was unmoved. That's when Airman, transformed into Jamie, finally revealed his evil nature. He's patient and cruel, evil and good at planning. He loves to collect the souls of the greedy, so he used human greed to trick people to die on the ship. Then he collected their souls and enslaved them. Of course, if you are not a greedy person, you certainly will not fall for his trick. What Airman didn't expect was that, Epps is also a ruthless person. She finally chose to blow up the entire cruise ship and die with Airman. And all the souls trapped on the ship escaped. And thankfully, Epps was lucky to survive with Katie's help. She was successfully rescued by a passing merchant ship. But as she lay in bed, she was horrified to find a group of people came into the cruise ship with boxes full of gold. And the dead airman, the only survivor, enters the new ship again. 
It seems that the devil's game is not over, because human greed is still alive and well.